everyone. I am your host, Alejandro Colindres. Welcome to Series 1 of the podcast, The Road to Champagne, 13 Tested Principles to Drive Your Career to Success. This podcast series will benefit professionals that have room for growth in their career, especially young professionals. We will explore one principle at a time. You can see the framework in the website, roadtochampagne.com. It has three parts, shape your mindset, build your brand, and be the driver. Today, we start part two on how to build your brand. We'll explore principle number six, know yourself. You see, to build your professional brand, you must start knowing yourself well. I bet you think you have great self-awareness, but what if I told you a Harvard Business Review study demonstrated only 10 to 15% of people actually are? So chances are you will benefit a lot by practicing this principle. Self-awareness is a key component of emotional intelligence. That is very likely what distinguishes the great leaders you've worked with from the crappy ones. Strong self-awareness helps you identify the right opportunities for you to shine, avoid the ones where you will fall on your face, understand what might be holding you back from growth based on your behavior, and even helps you minimize stress and anxiety. Here's the bottom line, people. To be an awesome leader in your field, you need solid emotional intelligence. To have solid emotional intelligence, you need sharp self-awareness. The formula is pretty straightforward. You can't be an effective and admired leader without understanding how you are wired and how others perceive you. Self-awareness is basically understanding how you are wired. It is composed of two parts, internal, or how you understand yourself, and external, or how you understand how others perceive you. Internal self-awareness is composed of your strengths, weaknesses, emotional response triggers, motivators and stressors, values and aspirations. When you are self-aware, you can explain accurately each of those components. This knowledge helps you make better career and personal decisions, such as which roles and environments better position you to be successful. Okay, so how do you increase self-awareness? You can do self-assessments online or perhaps at your employer to identify your personality type, values, and strengths. I found them useful because not only did I learn what activities or approaches come naturally to me, and therefore what career choices can better position me for success, but also how to work with other people that are wired differently. Another great tool is feedback. This is huge. You must actively seek feedback. 360-degree surveys are great, and nothing can beat a one-on-one conversation with colleagues or clients where you can ask them what you are doing well and what you could improve. Of course, you must filter what you hear because not everything is actionable or important, but you will get amazing insights. An important aspect to consider is that you must create an improvement plan or action plan based on what you learned. You need to define specific actions with deadlines for the steps you must take to build on your strengths and to neutralize your weaknesses. Lack of action means no improvement. To help me dive into this topic, I am very excited to be joined by Dr. Jasmine Franz. Jasmine is joining us from Germany, where she is a certified business coach and e-trainer an expert in talent and leadership development, and lecturer at the International University of Applied Sciences in Munich. She has a PhD in business administration and economics and has held HR and leadership development roles at Siemens and Unicredit. We met 10 years ago in a Harvard Business School executive education course. I am glad she's here with us because she is an expert in today's topic, among many other related topics. Jasmine, welcome to the Road to Champagne podcast. So great to have you here with us. How are you? Hello, Alejandro. Um, Thank you. I'm really well. And uh, it's an honor for me to join you to this podcast today. Thank you very much. Jasmine, so you work with top talent and you help successful professionals become even more successful. I really want our audience, especially the young professionals, to hear your thoughts on this topic. So let me ask you the first question. Based on your experiences coaching talent, Why is self-awareness instrumental for professionals trying to grow in their career? I think self-awareness is a key element for driving your career. It's something like a compass, you know. So this is a good metaphor for it. If you know about your individual strength, your motivators and your emotion triggers, you can work with them and you can use them. When you want to grow in your career, you have to be conscious about your personality and your behavior. Indeed, so you always have to be aware how you are perceived by others. Yeah. Without this, you're not aware of your blind spots 
and they can hinder you from your next career step, you know? Now, why do you think so many professionals don't pay the proper attention to knowing themselves, you know, kind of related to the uh, HBR study that I mentioned? Let me share two observations on this. So people often do not want to ask for feedback because they do not want to hear potentially a critical feedback, you know? Yeah. And the second thing is also people often think what brought me here will bring you there or will bring me further. Mm -hmm. And they, they are convinced that they know how their behavior, their interaction with people is just fine. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and obviously, Jasmine, as one is growing in your career, you have new roles, new responsibilities, new team. The environment around you changes, right? So by definition, what worked before doesn't mean it's going to work now or in the future. So it, it's something that I think locks people into the past and then hinders them from future growth as you are progressing in your career. That's a great observation. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is this is exactly the point because um, time changes. Even if you see right now that um, with our hybrid leadership we have, um, we work totally differently. It's also for employees as for leaders, um, they need a different knowledge, they need a different behavior. And uh, that's why you always need to know what your personal strengths are and how to use them in the right moment. And you always have to learn something more. So every situation is different. Mm -hmm. Now, you also mentioned being a little bit afraid of feedback. What would, you, what would you suggest to professionals to get over that fear and actually seek and embrace feedback? Don't be hesitant. Just ask for feedback. Of course, it's easier when you are in a yearly meeting with your boss um, to talk about feedback. But this is only once a year. And uh, that doesn't really matter. Yeah. A, a real feedback is useful when you're just coming out of a meeting asking your peers about how they perceived you and um, mm -hmm. asking your boss or other people around you. Yeah, just do it and ask for it. And then they will see that maybe it's also a chance for them that they get feedback from you. That's great. And actually, I want to ask a few more questions around feedback because that's, that's a huge you know, part of self-awareness. But let me ask you the next question. Can you share an example of a client that needed help with self-awareness? What were their symptoms, and how did you help him or her get back on track? Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, um, let me introduce, let's say, Janet. She was a really experienced in her field of studies. She was working procurement, mm -hmm. one of my coaches. Mm -hmm. She reached out for a management position for around three years, and she did not succeed. So she was somehow aware of her strengths, but she was not aware of how others perceived her. And this was the point mm -hmm. because she had some blind spots mm -hmm. on her behavior, being rough to colleagues on the one hand and shy and quiet in management meetings on the other hand. But the question was how we did find out. That's what you want to know. During our coaching, she did two main things. First, she asked peers and managers for feedback actively on her behavior and her presence. Mm, yeah. And the second point was also very important on that. She matched her own strength with what was requested from the management position. So together with her boss and HR, she, she sat together and matched the requirements for the position with her strength. Mm -hmm. And then she knew where are where were the learning areas for her. Yes. And this was really important because she didn't know before. And this is exactly what knowing about your own strength, but also knowing about uh, what is requested and how you are perceived at the moment. So this is something like a triangle, you know? Yes. And you know what I'm extracting? That performance by itself is not always everything you need, right? Performance has to be there. But if you're perceived, you know, being weak in certain certain scenarios or certain meetings where, you know, people expect you to be bolder following the case of Janet, that could also stop you from growth, even if you're delivering the results, you know, that technically are required from your role, right? So it's not just about delivering against the expectations of results and metrics for your role, but also having that perception that checks the box, you know, for the role that you have or the role that you aspire to, correct? 
Yes, absolutely. Jasmine, imagine you go back in time to an 18 or 23 year old Jasmine. Based on what you know now, what would you do differently to increase self awareness very early on? This is a very hard question, you know, <laughs> but sure. Um, it's, it's really, it's a wonderful question. But indeed, I had a great mentor at the time and he exactly, he was a leader with a high self-awareness, which was interesting at、mm -hmm. the time because not everybody is like that. And I had the chance to learn from him how to build the self-awareness. So, well, getting to know about my own strength and how to use them, because this is very hard, you know, knowing about your own strength maybe is the first step and it's Quite easy somehow,、um, but how to use them? Being conscious about my own behavior and how it's perceived—that's not always easy. And this is the key point there. So being conscious about when you use your strength and then how you are perceived. On the other hand,、yeah. so I try to compare myself with the expectations of my boss and the organization. And of course, there was always an area for development. Personally, as well as with social competencies overall. Okay, okay. From my own experience, you know, what I would do differently is take those assessments earlier. I, I found them useful,、mm -hmm. but I took them maybe four and a half years after I started working, you know, when I went to business school and then future roles. So, for the first four and a half years of my career, I thought I knew myself. And I, of course, I had to express it in you know, university essays for admission, but I didn't really fully grasp it until I did many of those assessments. And now I can describe myself accurately. you know,、uh, And I have pretty good self awareness if you compare you know, what other people say about me in a 360 survey versus what I say about me you know, in that specific criteria. So, there is a small gap between what they believe and what I believe, which you know, shows that my self awareness has gotten sharper. I think there is value in those assessments, you know, not recommending any one particular, but there's multiple that people can access online and in multiple ways.、Mm -hmm. Now, going back to feedback, right, and its importance, do you think feedback is underrated? Yes, yes, I think so.、Um, it's quite a brilliant way to get to know about how others perceive you. But It's an active part from the one who steers for feedback. Yeah, so you, you have to want it, right? You have to, you have to、uh, request it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why sometimes it's underrated because people are hesitant to ask for feedback. But if you want to develop on your personality and get the next step in your career, you have to know about what is expected、mm -hmm. and how peers, managers, decision makers see you. So you have to ask for feedback. Otherwise, you don't know. Yes. Do you see any cultural differences when it comes to approaching feedback? Like perhaps some cultures are more open to it and others are, you know, a little more hesitant. Yes, yes, it's absolutely,、uh, absolutely different. Because if you look at, for example, Italy, you have a different leadership style.、Mm -hmm. So as an employee, you are not really asking for feedback, you're just、uh, doing what your boss. Tells you.、Mm -hmm. And also, for example, if you look at China, I had the experience that、um, you have to work very close and a bit of a time with people to ask them for feedback because、um, it's also a country where people are not used to. Yeah. And in Germany, I would say it's quite usual that you ask for feedback and you give feedback. Yes. So you're right. This is、uh, culturally very different. Interesting.、Mm -hmm. If you get feedback on something you consider is part of your personality, can or should you change it? Can we change something about our personality that might be an anchor? You're asking a question which definitely comes up when you ask for this feedback. But basically, I think your personality consists of characteristics, of preferences, and of behaviors.、Mm -hmm. You can't really change your character, but somehow you are able to learn how to behave. And how to control your emotions,、mm -hmm. how to emphasize on improvement areas. So, I think the, the really basic personality you can't change, but you can work on developing some areas of behavior, of emotional triggers, of how you、uh, interact with others.、Yeah. It's not about then being an actor, 
and behave differently. But it's to build on your personal strength and somehow to work on the improvement areas. So you can change a bit to the positive. Yes. And I've seen this, Jasmine. I've seen people that are very, you know, bubbly, energetic. They're very outgoing. But, you know, if they are in a meeting with people that are a little bit more introverted and shy, they take over the airspace because they like to dominate the conversation. So if you give them feedback saying, hey, you're not giving the other teammates the opportunity to express their views, which we want to hear, can you, you know, tone it down a little? I think that's very valuable feedback. It's not saying, hey, change your personality. It's saying, hey, in this meeting or in this business context that we're in, we need you to give other people the proper opportunity to express their views. Don't be overpowering. So I think that is actionable because, you know, what you need to do is, you know, limit your opinions to a smaller number than normal just to give the opportunity to other people to express their opinions in the interest of enriching the conversation and making those people also feel part of the discussion, right? So you're not challenging somebody's personality. You're saying, hey, in this context, we just need you to act in this other way, which is totally achievable. Yes. And this is funny because I thought from the other perspective, uh, from the people who are uh, more quiet yeah. and who are maybe a little bit shy in the meetings, because Correct. also then they can work on it because for them, it's maybe a little bit more hard work because maybe they have to prepare with uh, some more input, some analytics, yeah. some figures and some arguments and uh, and then really bring them up. So they can also work on this, being prepared for the meeting. Yeah. So you, you bring up a good point. It doesn't matter where you fall in the spectrum of, you know, in this case, introvert versus ex extrovert. We all have to do something different. There is a balance, right? So for some, they need to do more. For some, you need to do a little less. Everybody has to do something a little different unless you naturally fall within that optimum balance, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Alejandro, may I ask you also a question? Yes, please, for sure. <laughs> so what do you think? What has worked well for you regarding giving and receiving feedback? Yeah, so Jasmine, I think a couple, couple of thoughts. One, early on in my relationships with new teammates, whether it's a new boss or whether it's a new team, or even new peers, right? Whether I'm stepping into that role or they're coming into joining my team. What I have found works is establishing early on that I want, as part of our relationship, the ability to openly give feedback both ways. So I set it as an expectation. The other thing that has worked well is something that you mentioned earlier, which is there's a small group of people, you know, sometimes including my boss, peers, even direct reports that I ask after a key meeting, hey, what did you think I did well? And what do you think I could have done better? And they'll give me some pieces of information that I find useful. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't notice that I didn't make eye contact with Joe. So maybe, you know, I, I made him feel left out of what I was saying. You know, little things like that. Sometimes it could be bigger things like to your point, hey, you didn't speak enough or you spoke too much, right? So there's always good knowledge in hearing their perception. And as I've said before, right, you have to filter that. Sometimes it's not really actionable, or you get contradictory feedback, or it's not really something huge, right? Like if you don't address it, it's not going to really, you know, slow you down in your career growth. So that has worked well. So, it, you know, just to wrap it up, setting that expectation up front in the relationship, and two, requesting it in you know, everyday situations, not just that quarterly or annual review. And I, I guess, uh, Alejandro, that people maybe when you ask them first time for feedback, they were a little bit surprised. So after a meeting, for example, but they get used to it. Correct. What do you think, right? Yes. I mean, in some companies, it is part of the natural culture. Uh, in management consulting firms, you know, I worked at Carney, McKinsey, it's like that. Mm -hmm. In other companies, not so, not so much. But once they know you and they know that you like feedback and you expect feedback and you're willing to give feedback, then that becomes part of the team culture, right? Maybe not of the whole company, but it's part of that team culture. So you can influence the culture around you in your you know, immediate team. And then all of a sudden, I've heard of other teammates doing the same thing with, with each other, you know, giving them themselves feedback without 
being that time of the year. So uh, I think you have that ability to influence that little world within your organization. Very well. So Jasmine, each of our audience members is on their journey to success, trying to get to their champagne. What is the main thing you want our audience to remember when they think about why they should know themselves? If you are aware of yourself, you gain more professional, personal, emotional, and social control, meaning overall happiness, because then you're convinced you are on the spot and you can reach a higher job satisfaction and better relationships. It's the way that you can drive you can drive how you are perceived by others. I think this is important. Great thoughts. And, you know, I didn't mention this uh, before in the podcast, but there is some research out there that shows that self-awareness not only helps reduce stress, anxiety, but gives you what you mentioned, which is more satisfaction, you know, happiness. So there are some very tangible benefits, you know, not only just career growth, but things that affect you on a daily basis. Awesome, Jasmine. So thank you so much for joining me today in exploring this powerful principle. It was really insightful to hear your perspectives. It was an honor for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jasmine. So if you'd like to follow or contact Jasmine, you can do so via her LinkedIn page or her website, www.francecoaching.com. And that is F-R-A-N-Z coaching. And remember, everybody, you can and must take action to start unlocking the power of this principle in your life. It is a critical component of helping you define in which direction to grow and in helping you get there. There are many great sources of deeper information about self-awareness and emotional intelligence that I encourage you to explore, including books, online resources and assessments, courses, etc. Consider this episode a high-level overview with the aim of emphasizing how critical this is to your growth journey. Let's meet again in episode seven, where we will explore why you must stick to your values. Values are a core part of self-awareness, but so important, they are their own principle. I have another amazing guest lined up for you. Thank you for joining me in this episode. I hope you are inspired by this principle. So cheers to your success on your road to champagne. Please don't forget to visit roadtochampagne.com and join our mailing list to download the framework we are using. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends, colleagues, and classmates. Send your comments via the website's contact page and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Follow Road to Champagne on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn.